Good day, mates and matettes, and welcome back to Fishing for Icebergs Let's Build. Uh, I'm just sitting here on my lovely bench on top of my fortress, and uh, since last time, I've about doubled the size of the village, so let's go and take a look at that, shall we? So, as I just fly up here, you can see the village spread out before me, and wow, it looks a... It looks a lot better now, doesn't it? Because it looks a lot fuller, there's uh, a lot more trees and stuff, so it gives it a lot of variation. And uh, for those of you who have keen eyes, you can see that now the elevation of the village varies. So if we just come down here, at this point you can see that it just goes up one block for this little area, and up here it goes up a further two blocks leaving an entire three-block raised section all along here. Now, if we just start with the new buildings, uh, the first one is right over here, and is just an extra tower at the front of the building. It is just a very standard tower, like all of the ones that were built on the fortress, even containing the same barracks section. Uh, another new building is this little house here, which, if I look inside, it's just quite generic and very small. <laughs> now, as we head up to the new elevated layer, you can see that there's this little fountain section. Uh, I've used coal blocks beneath the uh, half sections of quartz stairs to give this white on black contrast and if we look inside the actual fountain there's an emerald block underneath which is a quartz pillar which is all can be seen from outside as well as a glowstone block which provides some lighting. Now moving along we can also see that the houses in this section are a bit different uh, they have these upper levels which are made of white stained clay uh, which gives this sort of pinky wall which is just a, a nice extra texture in the village. As well as this there's also these false windows here which give the illusion of more space but in actual fact just have a solid packed ice block behind them to give a sort of frosted effect but also make them are unable to be seen through. Now if we just go inside this first house here, uh, you can see that this one has cyan windows and uh, it's fairly simple but this has its own little bathroom section with a tap here as you can see it's made of a tripwire hook and an item frame with red carpet in it to give this sort of whole effect. And if we look upstairs, we can see just very standard bedroom. Uh, this entire bedroom has had to be sunk down half a block in order to hide uh, some mismatched textures. But I think it still looks very nice. If we now head into the neighbor's house, we can see that if we look at the block, we can see that both of the houses take up exactly the same amount of room, but have different layouts, which gives, which makes them look almost completely different. In here, you can see they've got this long kitchen and stuff, uh, and this bathroom with the same tap and a stall, and the bathroom is much more restricted in here, but just as functional. And if we head upstairs now, we can see that the bathroom here, uh, the bedroom rather, is uh, again it's longer than the other one and thinner, but this leads to a more functional use of the space. But again, if we look in from the outside, we can see the different structures of the two builds. This one having the long section with shorter sections on either side and this one just having the two 
long sections, one with one floor and one with two floors. Uh, the cobblestone edging to the roofs and the detailing on the sides add some variation and depth. If we just head over to these two houses first, these two houses are exact mirrors of each other. So I'll just show you just this one. And if we come in, we see it's just, again, very standard house. Nothing particularly interesting. Now if we uh, look over here, we get this big three-story structure, which is not actually a house. I've called this the Grand River View, established 1261, and I think of this as sort of uh, a pub, like a, yeah, a pub, an inn of the village. So if we take a look inside this, we can see it's got these uh, lovely tables, which are made using pistons. This one's got a bit of grime on it, and that's just a sticky piston. If you look very carefully, you can see the redstone blocks which activate them. The reason I use these instead of the standard pressure plate tables is because I think these look a lot nicer uh, and a lot more proportional. The tables don't look as thin and they don't make that horrible clicking noise as you go past. If you head outside, there's another table outside in this little area, and it's just very nice. If we just take a little look, okay. Now if we uh, keep going, we can see here's the bar, and this building has a basement. Uh, it's got a dark oak uh, roofing, uh, and along here is a bathroom section. Lots of little stalls and some wash basins. On top of this, very unsanitary, through here is the kitchens of the um, inn, but because of size restraints, even though this is very unsanitary, they've put the bathrooms and the kitchens very close together. Uh, if we head upstairs into the uh, pink walled section, we find these three rooms, which are, uh, say, guest quarters that you can rent at the inn. Uh, all of them are the same. And if we head upstairs again, I imagine this to be the owner's quarters, uh, and yeah, this would be where he or she, where he or she lives, and they have a door out onto the roof, because isn't this just a lovely view? Look at that. That's pretty beautiful. Hmm. Now, uh, in terms of the externals of the building, you can see it has these uh, uh, L-shaped support struts, and, uh, and an outer face stone brick first floor. However, then when you head up to the second floor, it spreads out one block, which gives it this sort of top-heavy look. And it's this second floor, which is inlaid uh, stained clay with an detailing in cobblestone. You then go up onto a roof section which uh, roofs off these two parts of the build, but then there is also the third floor owner's quarters, which is outlay um, stained clay with no detailing. And now it's sort of the, that's the upper part of the village done, so if we just come across here, we get this very militant structure, which I imagine to be one of the barracks in the village. And when we come in here, you can see there's a communal kitchen sort of space, uh, a barracks in here for some soldiers, and a bathroom section. And then going up here is the tower, which has uh, the this first level extremity, and then continues up as normal, but without the barracks section, because there's a barracks in the uh, base of the building. <laughs> Looking along now, 
Uh, all the extra parts of the build that I've added in are mostly just more houses, which all have sort of similar interiors. But externally, you can see the difference between the outlay stone brick without dealing, uh, without <coughs> the outlay stone brick without detailing, such as this house and the inlay stone brick with cobblestone detailing, like here. You can also see different roof styles. Uh, this one which has the little fluted edges, uh, this sort of M-shaped roof, uh, the roofs that have, are sort of separated into cobblestone sections, and the very standard uh, square roof. Uh, you also have um, this building here, which is sort of a, which is very similar to one of the ones from last episode, where it is an L-shaped building where one part has a second floor and the rest of it is only one floor. This building as well also has some cyan stained clay detailing to just add an extra texture. Now there is one building of interest that I can show you. Uh, if we come around here, we come to this different looking building as well. Uh, as you can see on the outside, it's got some uh, upper roof windows and this sort of uh, rooftop gutter sort of thing, which is just to uh, minimize the height of the roof somewhat. Uh, now if we look at this, this actually has a sign on it, which is two fence posts and an oak wood block with uh, item frames with apples. And I imagine that this is sort of like the general store, like the supermarket in this part of the village. Uh, and so if we go inside, you can see that there are chests and black uh, carpet. And because of a uh, little feature of, of carpet, I've placed it in these sort of levels, which with the open gaps in between them, which if you look at it, it sort of looks like shelves. So you can imagine that uh, there would be items lined up along these shelves, and it would take it to the counter here, and you would pay the lovely store owner. Now if we just head up here and through the trap door, we get onto this balcony section which I imagine to be uh, this balcony and this uh, building section, which I imagine to be sort of the personal quarters of the store owner. He sleeps and stuff in there, and this is just like his, just a nice little balcony. And then he heads down into the store and starts his day of work. And yeah, if we just have uh, another look around the village, you can see all of the buildings that I showed you last time, as well as all the new ones. Uh, from the very small ones, such as uh, this square roofed one here and here, to the much more expensive ones up in the elevated part of the village that I showed you earlier, uh, the ones with the blue windows. Uh, we've seen the inn and the barracks and the uh, towers and the grocery store and as you can see along the embankment here where the uh, actual rise happens in the terrain you can see that there are trees and flowers and long grass this just adds a bit of uh, spacing and some nice greenery to the village uh, but that's all for me for now, and I will see you later.